are... Hello. I'm Evan, the education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from Studio Bell. This will be the third video in our series about the evolution of the piano. So far, we have looked at two different boxes with strings. First, we looked at the hammer dulcimer, where you hold the hammer in your hands and tap the strings. Our next box with strings, the clavichord, added a keyboard, but it is one of the world's softest instruments. This time, we're going to look at the instrument that became a superstar in the musical world during the Renaissance and Baroque period. I'm talking about the harpsichord. Of course, we'll use the Instrument Exploration Toolkit to look at the design, make a vibration, talk about timbre, and make some music. I have my harpsichord in front of me here, and we're going to look at its design. So while this is still a box with strings, as I open it up, this will remind you a lot more of our piano. There we go. So we have taken a few steps forward from the design of the clavichord. For example, now the strings run down the length of the harpsichord instead of horizontally to the keys. The clavichord does have a lid, but it flips back pretty far, while this one hangs over the strings a little bit, which will deflect out the sound. This is a design feature that is carried forward into grand pianos. This lid is held up at a pretty sharp angle, so I was usually uncomfortable opening it up when it was being explored by students. I was always afraid it would tip right over. That would be disastrous. So while this does look a lot more like a piano, it still seems like a bizarre version of one. First of all, it is quite obvious I have two sets of keys. So this is a two manual harpsichord. They get manual from the French for hands or main, just like a pedal is named after your foot. Another thing that people notice right away is that the black and white keys are reversed. This is a common design feature on harpsichords. I believe they switched it around ultimately because it's much easier to see the pattern when all the black keys aren't right beside each other. I do not yet have the full range of a modern piano. This keyboard is five octaves plus a major second. Just wanted that last note. Above this keyboard, it says MS Nap Calgary MCMLXX. MCMLXX should be the Roman numeral. I think that means 1970. So this instrument is a Hubbard harpsichord kit. That means that MS Knapp bought this in pieces and put it together. Really, it's modeled after a French double manual harpsichord from about 1770. You should know that not all harpsichords look the same. They didn't all have two manuals. They varied a lot in design, size, and even came with a variety of effects. I have three switches along the top. This one says four foot. I also have one on this side that you can't see. It says eight foot. And then this knob in the middle doesn't say anything. Looking at the strings inside, I can see that they are anchored to a wooden structure. In a modern grand piano, they'll put a steel frame to hold the tension of the strings, which would snap this thing in half. Let's lift the music stand to take a peek underneath. So this uncovered all the tuning pegs to tune the strings. I can also see a bunch of white bits underneath. Let's try playing a note. Now I did tune this instrument up a couple of months ago before we took a break, so let's see if it kept its tuning. Looks like I'll have to spend a bit more time with it. To tune it, you use this tool with all the pegs on the inside. There are generally two or three strings per note. I will also need my trusty tuner. Okay, I did a preliminary tuning. Let's see how it goes. So I might have to make a couple of adjustments, but that's a big improvement. It just took an hour. When I press these keys, I can see these little bits moving up. Let me lift this off and get a better look. So when I press the keys, these white things lift up. 
and it looks like each one has a little red piece of felt which drops back against the string to dampen it. So when I let go, it stops the sound. But how is it transferring energy to the string? Is it struck, pluck, air, or electric? When presenting this instrument to students, we'd always get excited when asking this question because it's actually kind of tricky. So when I press a key, it lifts this, which is called a jack. And the jack has a little thing sticking out called a plectrum, and it plucks the string as it moves past. It's as if each key is connected to a guitar pick that strums the string, or like a harp, it's a chord. So just like the clavichord, we have a class one lever pushing down, lifts up the jack. Like every other keyboard we will look at, the low pitch sounds can be found to the left and high pitch sounds to the right. How do I control the volume? We also liked asking this, because it's also kind of a trick question, in that every other instrument we've looked at so far has been velocity sensitive, meaning how hard we hit the keys affects the volume. But when I try it with this, I'll touch it lightly. Now let me hit it harder. So this is the first instrument along the path towards the piano that is not velocity sensitive. It does not care how hard I hit these keys. Basically, the plectrum is waiting for a certain amount of weight for it to pluck the string. So it always plucks the string with the same amount of energy, giving me the same volume. I do, however, have these switches which activate different strings. And this keyboard is louder. The upper manual would usually be used for the melody line, whereas the bottom would be chords. So they make the upper manual louder so it will stick out. How would you describe the sound of the harpsichord? I heard a quote once that the harpsichord sounds like two skeletons wrestling on a tin roof. A bit nasally, choppy, or sharp. There is a striking timbral change by adding the octave. Also, this little switch actually puts a piece of felt next to the string. This is a lot like a guitar technique called palm muting. Guitarists place their palm against the string as they strum it. It takes out a lot of the overtones of the note. And it gives it a much softer tone. This keyboard has one more trick up its sleeve in that I can couple the two manuals together. If I pull this out, push it in. Ah. It automatically plays the notes above. Then all three strings are plucked with a single press of the key. I'd also say the sound of the harpsichord has become a cliche in movies when you want to paint a scene of aristocrats in powdered wigs talking about the peasants. The harpsichord is really fun to play. Like the clavichord, the keys are nice and light under your fingers, making fast notes very easy. And anyone who's taken piano lessons and studied music from that time knows there's lots of little trills and turns and little finger tricks. And a lot of these turns or fancy things are to make up for the lack of volume. You can emphasize a note by playing the notes around it. You can't emphasize it by making it louder. But with this instrument, the keyboard could really shine. It also ushered in an age of keyboard virtuosos, which I am not. Though I will link to some great harpsichord performances, including a video of Bach's triple harpsichord concerto that you should really check out. But despite being a huge leap forward, it still feels a bit like a musical typewriter. It's very strange that every time I touch this key, the note really sounds the same. Without that volume control, it really limits the expressive ability of the instrument. At least compared to what comes after. So the musical instrument inventors kept on designing and kept on dreaming. I hope this was an interesting look at an instrument that looks a lot like a piano, but really has its own sound. Next week, we will look at a real piano, though we'll find they still have a long way to go. And until next time, happy exploring. 
Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.